All right, we're going to go ahead and get started then. Welcome everyone. My name is Sheila Allen. I am the president of the board of Explore It Science Center, a partner along with Tuliomi in the Woodland Regional Park and Preserve. And we're so glad that you can be here with us for the fourth um, and I think final community meeting that we're having as planning for a grant that we are applying for for the next phase of the Woodland Regional Park and Preserve. So I'm very pleased to have you here with us um, today. Um, we've been working on this project, both us and Tuliomi, since 2015. And what a great opportunity this is, a reuse of the City of Woodland landfill, which we, we are now converting to a park. And so a great, great use of, of, of a previous um, of use for the city and the, the region. So we're very pleased to be a part of this, um, this presentation and of this project. So I just wanted to let you know that anytime during the, the presentations, you can go ahead and put your questions in the chat and we will address them at the proper time. There'll be an opportunity for questions and answers at the end. And um, I, the, oh, and oh, but there's a new survey that's going, that's available on the Tuliomi website. So if you feel like after this, you thought of something else, you would like to, you would like to provide some additional information. There's an opportunity for the survey through that um, that location. So I would like to now hand it off to, are we, are we gonna do any other introductions or are we just gonna hand it off to Stephanie? Okay, all right. So I will then go ahead and hand it off to Stephanie Burgess with the City of Woodland. Take it away, Stephanie. All right, thank you so much, Sheila, uh, for that introduction. Um, can I just get a thumbs up that everyone can see my screen with the Woodland Regional Park? Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, okay, so good evening, everyone. My name is Stephanie Burgos. I work in the Economic Development Department of the city. So my responsibilities are mostly focused around business outreach, partnership creation, and general support to businesses. Um, but since 2019, I've also been involved in the restoration and development of the Woodland Regional Park Preserve, alongside our city manager, Ken Hyatt, who's been instrumental in leading this project. So I'm going to go ahead and provide some history and also the vision of the Park Preserve. And then I'll let our project partner from Tuliomi, Lars Anderson, uh, give an overview of what's been happening at the park to date. So here we go, jumping right in. The Woodland Regional Park Preserves is a 160-acre nature park along Road 102 and 25A, just across the road from the Spring Lake development. Uh, this park preserve is not your typical city park with a play structure or soccer field. Um, this park actually sits at the site of the former landfill, which was capped in the 80s and continues to be maintained and monitored by the city to this day. So the process from landfill to nature park is pretty unique. When soil was excavated on the site to cover the landfill, a burrow pit was formed. So coupling that with rainfall and seed germination over the years, a pond that you can see here was created. Um, it's now lined with numerous native plants um, that form a riparian habitat. This along with the site's vernal pools is home to birds, coyotes, other wildlife, and nearly 20 different plant species. This land, which is city owned as of 1930, was also used as a landing site for model airplanes following the landfill's closure. The city also considered developing the site with a mall or a solar field, but the city ultimately decided um, to preserve this land, and especially as now it has easements, the land will remain a nature park. It's been identified as a future nature park for our site in our community as far back as the 1996 general plan and remains referenced as a nature site in the 2035 plan. So now I just have this zoomed in map here um, showing a couple of different areas here. So the North Regional Pond that you see, it's actually north of this, um, was built as part of the city's stormwater drainage system. And it's also the Woodland Davis Clean Water Agency treatment facility. It serves as designated function as a detention basin, but also has 88 acres of open water and is used by various migratory birds and other resident bird species along the Pacific Flyway. So this is basically I'm just gonna admit him. Uh, this is basically just to show that within this region, um, we actually have multiple areas that can be used by wildlife and um, is a really great asset for Woodland, Yolo County, and our region at large. 
So going back to the park in about 2015, 2016, um, significant efforts were made in tandem with our key project partners, including Tuliomi Explore It and several others that are shown here. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, sorry, I just lost my place. So a big push was also made to seek outside funding to supplement city funds for the park preserves restoration. And the end goal here has been always to make and create public access while preserving the park's nature and wildlife. So now with over $1.5 million secured, numerous park improvements and restoration works commenced in September 2019. Uh, from then until now, although the park has been closed to the general public, it is accessed multiple times per week by project partners for a variety of uses like bird watching, plant management, and others that Lars will outline next. I also want to point out that the city has a wonderful resource of local experts and enthusiasts of the park that compose our project's leadership team. There's about 15 people with backgrounds in science, fundraising, education, and more that volunteer their time and meet with the city on a monthly basis to provide feedback and input about the park's progress and have also been instrumental in securing funding for the park. Uh, looking forward to what's coming next and relevant for tonight's discussion, our project partner Tuliomi is leading the efforts in collaboration with us and Export Science Center to seek $3 million in grant funds from the California State Parks um, in order to construct a center for nature, science, and culture at the Woodland Regional Park Preserve. This center is planned to house nature-related educational programs. And furthermore, because the park's proximity to schools and the community college, there's great potential for collaborations including field trips and other educational programming. Uh, lastly, as the park also now has um, space for bike parking and an ADA walking trail, exercise and mental health is also envisioned to be a focus of the park. So we hope that by the end of this presentation, you'll agree with us that the center will be an invaluable resource for our community. Um, I will go ahead and conclude with saying that the success of the park is in large part thanks to our volunteers, our project partners, city staff, um, as well as our city manager who's been leading the project since day one. So with that, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Lars, who will detail some of the different initiatives on site. Um, and to give a quick introduction of Lars, Lars is one of Tilliami's board members with a 35 year career in conducting and managing research on aquatic invasive plant biology and management at the USDA Agricultural Research or Service Lab at UC Davis. He's also a key member of our leadership team and has been super passionate and very involved in the park. He's there almost every single day and has spent tons of hours. So um, I'll let Lars take it away here. Uh, thanks, Stephanie. Let me see if I can get my uh, presentation up here. Welcome everybody. Thanks very much to, for joining us on our, our final public input meeting. I wanna make that point. This, this meeting is really to get information and, and ideas from the public, new folks out there, <clears throat> because we've um, come a long way, we have a ways to go. Now, I'm gonna provide a little bit of information on the accomplishments we've had at the park in the last several years. It's pretty exciting. And that really is the park. It's sunrise coming out the east there. This was taken off a few years ago and we actually had a lot of rain in the park. But I'll talk about our partners a bit, the grant funding, <clears throat> and then on, on the, run, the projects on the ground that we've completed. And just to remind you, I think Stephanie made a good point of this. This has really been a collaborative effort uh, with our partners, Explore It, uh, the Yellow Basin Foundation, Woodland Community College. All these folks have at different times come in and uh, helped out to get this park where it is right today, including some grants, a lot of volunteer help. You'll see some of the evidence of that volunteer help a little bit later. So we're still growing volunteers. And so if you're out there in the audience tonight and you're interested in helping out, please contact the OMI or Explore It. Uh, we'll be happy to put you uh, involved with uh, some of the work that's going on. There are lots of things to do. Uh, we also will have a docent program starting up this winter, as we did about two years ago, right before COVID. So there's lots of opportunities for helping in the park. I want to give you a little overview. This is the, uh, the, the vision that we had for the park. Um, and, as uh, Stephanie mentioned, it was a, a landfill with a borrow pit. And all these features that you're seeing there pretty much now are um, either partly done or in, in, in the works and in planning. But I wanted to point out that we had some major uh, grants listed at the top um, from the California Wildlife uh, Conservation Board, uh, from the Parks Recreation, and from Cal Parks on an educational grant. So we've had three major grants that Stephanie mentioned. That's really gotten us off the ground. 
literally lost the ground for the park as it is. But I want to point out that we actually have a, a trail that's shown in yellow here that's actually completed. That's the ADA trail. I'll show you some examples of that a little bit later. In the center, and the, and the key feature is the, uh, the wetland that we have reshaped with one of our grants, which has a permanent pond on one side on the left there, and then a wetland that's seasonal on the right. And I'll show you some pictures of that a little bit later. Uh, in addition, we have funds for a kiosk, which is completed as well at the lower left-hand side of that um, wetland area, the parkland area, and ADA parking. And you'll see that box down the lower part of it. That's our planned footprint area for the future science, nature, and culture center that we're applying for this grant funds to, to launch. So that's a, a critical component of the park we hope to have there in, in the near future. We've had lots of other uh, contributions to the park. Hilo Audubon has put up uh, bird boxes in the past by spring. Rotary Club has a, a plan and actually has already contributed funds to design a pavilion. I'll show you where that's gonna go. Uh, Yellow Community Foundation has sponsored um, some funds to get nonprofits out there to do programs. As soon as we get through this, hopefully this spring, this, this COVID problem we're into and having folks out there, we'll be able to start some of those programs. And Woodland Community College has been involved too, and they're on our leadership team, and they're helping to fund some of the uh, important uh, signage that we're putting up there, including a, a ceramic uh, feature that the art of student Shelton is developing. So that's construction of the kiosk, which is now finished, and that's kind of what it looks like. You can see it in these images here. Uh, this will be a, a, a sort of a starting place, a gathering place for docent groups for the public to come to enjoy the park. There'll be information on the park itself, a little bit of the history, the cultural history as well, and of course the wildlife in the park that you can see there as well. I want to point this out, that's the ADA trail that you can see there, and that wraps around most, about half of the wetland at this point. It's about a half mile uh, ADA trail, really fully accessible, um, and it's, it's a great place to walk out there. And hopefully when it's open in the spring, you'll have a chance to, to do that. I wanted to show you what it looks like when we have water. This is actually uh, not too long ago, the 29th. Um, and that's the sort of south end of the park showing how the ADA trail wraps around the area. I wanted to point this out because right there is where the proposed rotary pavilion is going to go. And that's, that's sort of the view that the pavilion will have. And, and it's, it's pretty spectacular. It, it's going to be looking like this. It'll hang over uh, the edge of the, the wetland. And this is important because it, it shows the, the collaboration as well. We have rotary clubs from Winters, uh, Davis and Woodland, who have all contributed to the design features of this and, and are raising funds in this, this coming year in 2022 to actually construct the, um, the pavilion. And it'll be right adjacent to the ADA trail, so it'll be a great gathering spot for docent tours, for art in the park, various activities that can go on uh, on that beautiful site at the, south, at the north end of the pond there. This is the Woodland Tree Foundation folks planting trees last spring. We have a couple of areas where we planted different species of trees to increase uh, the diversity. Most of the trees out there are now our black willows. And so we've added another four species in four different locations. And those guys did a great job along with the scouts who have helped to put in some irrigation systems and, and the park as well. And I wanna point this out. We just started filling the pond uh, permanently <clears throat> on the 22nd of November. And this is the, the the upper left-hand side shows the, the gusher coming out from our well. Uh, the bottom shots show the little stream. Uh, there's a channel and a stream that, roll, that goes into the park itself and will keep that permanent pond about 12 acres full year round. So we're all pretty excited about this. This is the first time we started actually putting water in that hasn't been rainwater. And so we should be able to see some waterfowl coming out there in the next uh, few months, I'm sure. And that's kind of what it looks like from the view. And again, a sunrise of the park that was taken not too long ago. Um, but when you see the waters coming up in those little islands, those are refuges for the waterfowl as well. And you might notice in the bottom left, there's a little light line. That's our irrigation system. We'll be doing more plantings along the pathway in, in the near future. I mentioned about the, the Audubon folks have been out there. That's bird box. So those were occupied actually last spring. Um, and they'll be put back up at their full height, uh, I'm sure by this uh, late February or March this year. And just to give you some idea of what kind of birds we've seen out there, the ibis have been out there. This is a couple of years ago when we had lots of rain. Um, we have red-tailed hawks that are nesting out there, some beautiful birds. So it's a fantastic birding site uh, for, for those interested in learning how to bird, also those who have been doing it for quite some time. I want to point out too, we have some really interesting native plants because we have unusual soils. We have alkali soils, 
that are unusual. And this is actually a, a shot of a, a plant called salt grass. And it's interesting because it's a native grass that grows pretty well at the park, but you'll also find this at the seashore along the Bayland areas in San Francisco because that, that salty soils are the kind of soils that does really well in. So we're really pleased to see a lot of this native grass coming up there at the park. I mentioned we have a grant for, for educational uh, programs. And of course, this was kind of put on hold uh, when COVID started. Um, it has three components. It has a go science for getting kids outside and doing hands-on science at the park. Um, we have a docent training component, which we did start uh, two years ago. And we trained about 40 uh, docents uh, in in-classroom uh, sessions. We'll be getting those folks out here this late winter and early spring. Then we have a citizen science component as well, and that really allows the families and, and individuals, kids to get involved with the changes that are going on at that park so they can develop their own pro their projects and uh, be able to take data and use that, that data as we see things change at the park. So it's really an amazing opportunity for kids. You can imagine a third grader starting out there and maybe having a project that runs through sixth or seventh grade. It's, it's pretty exciting. And we've actually already had a few events out there. This was a uh, nature's theater. One of our uh, Tulio Murray board members, uh, Lindy Dawkins, put the, this program together. And these kids are out there. And what they're doing now is uh, they have recognized this in the center of that picture is Superbird. And before they got there, they were learning about what birds do. And it was a great session. These kids are they're probably around from six to eight years old or so, some a little bit younger. And as they walked along the trail, they were learning by doing, by picking up things and, and figuring out what birds do, sort of learning within themselves. And the story is that this, this poor super bird forgot to how to be out of birds and, and what birds do. So they gathered around the bird and explained what a bird does. And so of course that, that uh, relieved her from her bad memory, not remembering what a bird is. And we've had other groups a little bit older. This is uh, about a week later. Uh, older kids about, I think, eight to 11 years old coming out there and learning about the park as well. So we really have some really great activities going on out at the park. And you can see the, the ADA trail on the left upper left-hand side, the kids walking out there. So I think I'll stop here. We wanna really have some input from you folks. And I think that um, um, it, it's an opportunity at this point to, to really think of some ideas. We, uh, you'll hear as we talk about the plans ahead that we have some, a facility we're, we're trying to build with this grant. And I think that uh, Sandy Schubert, who's the executive director of Tuliomi, will uh, explain the, the plans ahead. And, and, and we'd surely like to have your input on those. And as she said, put, put your ideas in the chat box and we'll have a Q&A afterward as well. I think I'll stop here and hand it back to Sandy. Thanks, Lars. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I'm gonna to try to get my presentation up. My name is Sandra Schubert. I am the executive director of Tuliomi. And as everybody has told you, we have been working on this collaborative with um, a bunch of folks. So I'm so glad you can be on this. I'm sorry. I'm sometimes a bit of a, hold on. I don't think it, my screen's sharing. Hold on, let me try this again. Okay. Let me see if I can. Okay, here we go. Okay, you guys, thank you for um, bearing with me and my technical difficulties. It is, um, it is something I struggle with regularly. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about um, the draft master plan, the facility we're raising money for, and what we see is the next steps at the preserve, Woodland Regional Park Preserve. So this is a photo of the entire area. Um, you can see where the wetlands has gone in. You can see where the ADA trail is going around it. Um, the entrance is down off of road 25A. Down at the um, beginning, we have signage out. We're, um, we've got some signage out there. We're planning more signage out there. The city is planning a street light at this corner. <clears throat> at one point, um, there is a bike path that comes in through there. There is a plan by SACOG, Sacramento Area, um, Sacramento Area Council of Governments, to put in 300 miles of bike trails to connect Yolo, Solano, and other counties that would go right past w, uh, the Woodland Regional Park Preserve and that entrance to um, give us better access. The Upland Trail is a plan we have for the future. Um, we are looking at 
um, where the cap solid waste dump is sometime down the line, putting another trail up on that. It's a slightly raised area. It's about 20 feet high and it's amazing the views you can get from that point. You can stand there and do a 360 and literally because of the perfect placement and the value, see the mountains all the way to the Sierras, all the way on a clear day, out of, all the way to Snow Mountain, um, Berryessa Peak. It's really quite a stunning view. So that is in the works also. Um, the wetland area, Lars talked about the wetland area. Um, I'm not going to go into it since he showed you some of the great pictures of the water in there, but that has been a focus of it. And then the location of where the nature science and cultural center will be in connection with the other um, pieces of our puzzle here. Um, so the nature science and cultural centers, some of the things we've already put in here are there's a couple of ADA parking spaces. Um, so that um, we don't, we have, um, they're the only formal parking spaces we have right now, but I will show you where we're going to put more parking spaces in. We have a kiosk, bike racks are going in um, at the point where the kiosk and the bike racks are. We also have, um, we have um, facilities, um, toilets and hand wash facilities for folks. Um, the entry sign, welcome entry sign, road 25A, the entry road. Right now, the um, park has not been open to the public because of COVID, and um, the hope is to have the park open in April of 2020, so everybody keep your fingers crossed. Um, we're really hoping for that to happen. The bicycle and pedestrian path that comes up next to the um, road that we'll, we're working on. Um, parking and bus turnaround areas. This is where we're going to put the parking um, area, the upper area where you can, where it's up here, this is an old, um, it's an old model air runway. So that's gonna be converted into parking spots and we're gonna take some of the gravel parking spots over here and make part additional parking for folks there. Um, sorry, for some uh, no, it won't turn. Uh-oh, okay, let's see if I can make this move again. I can't get anything to move. Hold on, you guys. There we go. Okay. Um, this is another picture, a little more detail about the number of parking spaces and such that we hope to see how that will look in the long run. Um, you can, as you can see, and I'm going to show you a couple different pictures and conceptuals of the site to give you a better idea. Um, where we anticipate some sort of a deck out here. Um, this is where the facility itself would be. It would be very close to the parking. It would be at the beginning. The ADA trail would begin right there and it swings around that way. So um, as we said, um, we'll talk more about the facility, but we envision classrooms, a lab, indoor, outdoor um, spaces for learning in the facility. Here's another picture. Um, it's another portion of it. So the facility would be down this way. Um, but this shows you where the ADA accessible trail is. This is a slightly old picture because what we've done is there is um, water on both sides of the ADA trail. Um, the, uh, we plan another trail that would connect with the ADA trail going around this way. We'll talk more about that. And this is the idea where we would like to have some upland trails and then maybe a, um, a gathering area with a um, sundial or something up there for um, folks to, to look at the view and have some time to um, rest. We also envision um, some benches being placed along these areas. That shows you um, some of the upland area. And this is area right now, it does border on the, um, the AD accessible area, but um, it's not the area we're using at present. And the upland trail would be 3.1 miles. Okay, um, some benches, there'd be signage up there. Um, we do want to talk about when we talk about nature and science, um, there's the programs and the education. We also want to talk to people about the history of the area, um, both our Native American history and the agricultural history in the area. Um, this is another picture again. Um, it shows you the permanent pond, the seasonal wetlands, um, in relationship to the science center, the kiosk, the bike racks. And then there, as Lars mentioned, we've been working with the rotaries and they are raising money to put in a pavilion which would go um, to in this area. 
Um, so we talked about we're going to do another trail. We're going to connect. Um, the proposal is to connect a trail around this way to the ADA trail. This will be a multi-use trail. It will not be. Um, it will not be a paved trail um, like the ADA trail. It will connect around here. We are skirting some sensitive areas and some sensitive species by doing the trail, but it will form an entire loop so that folks can enjoy the area. Okay, we're also hopeful in the future, we'd like to have a viewing deck in this area. You've seen a couple different um, visions of it so that folks can actually get out and see some of the wildlife out there. It really has been amazing when there's water in there, what we've seen out there. We, um, I know Lars talked a little bit about um, the fledglings and we've had coyotes. Um, we have coyote pups out there, it's been quite exciting. This is the location where the pavilion would be. So you can see the view you would have from the pavilion out across the wetlands. Um, this is another view of the wetlands. This is the ADA trail. It has since been paved. And again, so the ADA trail goes like this and there is um, there's water that goes down the side. That has been changed a little bit. Um, everybody's talked about the park is owned by the city. Um, I, I'm not gonna go through all that. Um, it is worth pointing out, it is home to threatened and endangered species. We have conservation easements, we have Conway Ranch Preserve. Um, we are bordered by a conservation easement. On the other side, we have the Ranch Preserve, which is a working ranch that is doing um, a bunch of really innovative things on farming, including farming salmon. Um, so we it gives us a continuous area in which to see how nature develops and um, in which to teach different folks to get, get folks out on the ground and experience different things. Um, this is um, a more close in group um, vision of the Nature and Science Center. As you can see um, here, let's, so um, the seasonal pond, the wild, wildlife habitat, we envision indoor and outdoor classrooms, lab and storage. Um, people have said that it's really important to um, have storage. Um, and that's something folks forget. There'll be two classrooms, a multi-purpose um, space for rotating exhibits, conferences, and other programs. And we envision shared office space for a variety of collaborating and nonprofit partners. Um, and it calls for a series of indoor spaces that open to a large covered outdoor spaces to accommodate indoor out a wide variety of indoor outdoor events. And I'm sorry, I cannot get this to work. Multi-purpose room. So it envisions a multi-purpose room. I do not know why this, I am not the technical per person, but I know that if I could make this work right, it would show you as it would lay you on all this, the key to, um, I'm sorry. There, there's the kitchen. That's where we would have a kitchen because we want folks to be able to come and spend some time and if we're having events with kids there, but we want to be able to either to store food and feed them. Okay, office space, restroom, storage, more storage. Um, we'd have multiple decks um, for viewing wildlife habitat and um, for, do, for um, doing a lot of the geoscience, the go science and the um, citizen science we've talked about. Again, this is a, um, another conceptual artist rendering that shows what the Science and Nature Center might look like from the um, one view. And the long-term, as this says, the long-term vision is to create a center that will provide facilities for formal and informal education for people of all ages and abilities. Um, and to provide an atmosphere that people um, feel welcome in and can really explore nature. So I want to thank you guys for um, joining us today and learning about the center. I am going to stop screen sharing and I'm turning it back over to um, Stephanie Burgos with the city to do some closing before we go on to Q&A. Thanks, Andy. Um, so we hope that that gave you a pretty good overview of the project's history, our vision, and also kind of a taste for what's been going on in the park so far. Um, now we're going to open up for questions and comments. And in particular, we're really hoping to get your comments um, and feedback 
on the different aspects of the park. So feel free to ask any questions about the park itself, um, but we're also really curious to hear what you would like to see actually within the Nature Science and Culture Center.